Hey my herbal friends, we're going to talk about Curly Doc Rumix Crispus Roots in this video. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to harvest and uh, dig up the roots and make a beautiful tincture for winter health. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, so we're back doing the Curly Doc and we're going to talk about the root. So this is a really nice one that I left. <laughs> it's kind of like in a field where my greenhouse used to be and is literally the only thing left here. So I mowed around it just so I could do this video and show you the root. And I'm hoping this is going to be a really nice root because um, I already dug up a whole bunch of other roots to show you how to make a quick extract, a tincture. That word's used interchangeably. Everybody has their ways of using it. I always say extract and sometimes I say tincture. So don't misunderstand me if I say it um, incorrect. But what I'm talking about is making a tincture with an alcohol and not a glycerin or vinegar or any other um, substrate that you might be using. Just found a heart in here. <laughs> That's kind of cute. So basically I am I want to dig this up and show you the root. I'm going to talk about the root real quick. I've already talked about the root in the last video, but I'm going to tell you about curly dock roots. Now the roots um, are yellow to a, a golden. You'll see when I dig it up, they'll be like a, either a yellow or a dark golden color. I've seen the dark golden colored ones before. You want to dig it up in the fall, like we're in the fall, we're in August, end of August almost. And this is kind of fallish for me. This is when all your herbs are out right now and you need to dig up your roots because the flowers have gone by. And I apologize for this background noise. There's a lot of vehicles going through here. And uh, so um, I always say like if you need medicine in the springtime and these guys come up, by all means, dig it up and take your medicine because there's still going to be berberine and there's going to be a lot of medicine in there. And the plants know. So, you know, if you need something and you're like, oh, I need that root, my liver's, uh, you know, and you got some skin problems going on from the winter and you're like, well, I'm just going to make some tea. I'm just going to dig up a couple roots and have that until the fall. Then I'll be smart and I'll dig up a bunch of roots and keep them for the winter and have enough for later on. So, yeah, don't think, oh, my gosh, I have to wait all summer long and I can't have any medicine from this plant, which you can. So it is a perennial. She's a perennial and she'll come back each year, but the older docks will be, get woody and they'll lack medicine. And you, you can't cut them. It, it, it's impossible. They're so woody. It's just like the burdock roots. Um, so you would think that it's a biannual, but it's not. They'll keep coming back. New shoots will come. New roots will come. The seeds will throw themselves and just everything will start all over again. So the roots can be used as a poultice. You can take the roots, you can grind them up and use a poultice for a blood purifying cleanser. Um, also, she stimulates and detoxes and nourishes the liver. I've talked about this in the other video, but I'm going to go over it again. And uh, she has the berberine, which is very bitter and astringent. It's a compound, and the compound is uh, it's antibacterial, antiviral, uh, antimicrobial. It contains a compound that can also kill parasites and uh, bacteria, fungi, and yeast. It flushes out. It can flush out parasites. But I don't recommend taking her in large doses either. It'll probably make you a little sick. So you make the poultice, like I said, by grinding up the roots and you can place it on the bottom of the feet. Oh, this bull thistle keeps picking me. <laughs> um, place it on the bottom of the feet. If you're not able to ingest it, that's how why I would do it that way. Or you can make the extract and or tincture and uh, rub the tincture. Like I, ha I tell people with a lot of my formulas with kids and they're sick, they're not gonna drink anything. With my boys, I always rub their feet and up and down their spine and on their belly when they were sick. They're not gonna take anything if they're sick. They're gonna throw it up. So you're just gonna rub them down with the herbs. That's why I really like making tinctures because they're versatile. They can be used so many different ways. You can put them in their bathtub. You can put it in your tea to evaporate the alcohol if you're alcohol sensitive. Um, my alcohol does not have gluten in it, so that's a plus. Um, she helps with jaundice. 
skin issues, boils, congested liver, constipation, and diarrhea. So either or. So you know it's not going to give you, if you take it, oh, I'm going to get diarrhea from it. No, if you need it, to, if you're constipated, it's going to help you with that. If you have diarrhea, it's going to help you with that. So it's a pretty amazing herb. Um, syphilis, iron deficiency, anema, anemia, gallbladder issues. Well, if it helps liver, it helps gallbladder. So you want to dry the roots for the winter and use it as a tea. And as a tea, it's great for rheumatism, sore throat, liver problems. Um, remember, it's bitter, very bitter and astringent. The compound berberine is antibacterial. So, and as she's also high in magnesium and calcium. But remember, you don't want to take her in large doses. You, this is why I like combination. When you make herbs in a, com, a combo, they work really great together and that's that's what I like doing. I like making combinations. So you're gonna get one herb that's gonna help the other herb and the other herb is gonna help the other herb and it's kind of how they work together. You know, we work as a team. So let's dig this baby up and I hope I can dig her up. <laughs> and try not to, when you're digging her up, I got my microphone hanging out. <laughs> um, go around it. You can hear it snapping, and if you hear it snap, it means you've, you're going to lose it. Oh, it is my... So we're going to put the microphone down for a moment. Hopefully you can still hear me. See, did you just hear it snap? I should have put the microphone in. You can probably hear it snapping. Let's see what we got here. Pretty easy to dig up. It's easier to hear me with a microphone. Oh shoot. It's not me today. There we go. Alright. Wow, I'm just gonna leave that there. So we're gonna just dig as much dirt as we can off. Very simple. Very simple. It's not hard at all to dig up the roots. Some of them can go pretty deep. And then I just take a hose and uh, hose off the dirt as much as I can outside. You don't want it pegging up your... There's a few in here. This is not just one root. There's kind of like a, a group of them. <laughs> a group of uh, curly dots all bound up together. Which is fine. If you just get one, you just get one little tiny root. So I'm going to go and I'm going to wash these off. And we're going to go in the kitchen. And I'm going to show you how to make a tincture. And we're going to make a tincture out of this beautiful root. See here? It's a light color pale. And we also, we can eat these. This is a really nice uh, bunch of uh, curly dark. So here you go, folks. Let's go in the kitchen and uh, make some medicine. Although you can eat the roots too if you want to steam them and cook them, but I can tell you right now they're bitter. <laughs> there you have it. We'll see you in the kitchen. Peace. Friends, so I wanted to do this short clip. I just, after we had just dug up the root, this is the one that was just dug up. Look how light it is compared to the ones I dug up earlier today. Check these out. Look at the difference in color. They're still docks. Great medicine. I think these are a little older. This is a little newer. That's what I'm assuming. So these are all the docks that I dug up today. I'm going to make a bunch of medicine and dry some of them and have the leaves. And here we go. Here is an older stock. Check this out. Remember I was telling you how woody it is? Like, you're not even breaking that. That is so woody. You're not using that. That is not good medicine. So what you're going to take off of this is the seeds for your coffee. And you, that is in the beginning of the video. I showed you how to do all that. So also, I want you to... Um, when you're out there and you're digging up your roots, 
<clears throat> take a piece of it. I pulled a piece off of it. You can see I was chewing on it a little bit. Take a piece of the root and just nibble on it and, and feel the medicine. Like you can taste the berberine. Like it just stays in your mouth. It's a pretty cool taste. It is a little bitter, but it's really a nice tasting uh, medicine. This is how you get to learn your medicines is by actually doing it and tasting it. And this is why I like to do the hands-on with you and show you like this is berberine. This is an amazing medicine for your liver, for your gallbladder, for your skin. Uh, flush out your parasites. We all have parasites. If you have animals, you have parasites. If you eat animals, if you eat meat, you're going to have parasites. Uh, you breathe, you're going to have parasites. <laughs> you know, so we all have them. They're so small, we can't see them. You know, so it's it's good to once a year have do a little liver cleanse. That's why these plants come up first thing, first thing in the year. Your dandelion, your burdock, your your curly dock. Um, I always save the, the best videos for last, and this one is definitely. This could be a two-hour-long video doing just curly dock because there's so much food and so much medicine with this plant. It's unbelievable. So this is, I'm doing it in different sections and different um, clips because there is so much to it. So <clears throat> these are the guys that I, girls, guys that I just dug up not long ago and washed them. I'm actually going to bring them in and wash them some more um, because they are still dirty. It's, they're slimy. They got that mucilaginous uh, on them and that's just from the plant itself. Um, the stems are like that. You see it? You see the slime? <laughs> but that's just from the plant. That's not going to hurt anything. It actually makes a thick uh, soups. And it's good for your stomach. It's kind of like slippery elm, if you think about slippery elm. It coats the stomach. So don't think it's gross. It's not. This one's kind of cool. I know this is like a first, this has got to be first year because it's so tender and it's lighter than these guys. And then they'll just start getting woody and get bigger as they grow each year. So I got quite a haul here and I've got some more to dig up because they. I let them go. I let them go in my garden so I'll have them to either show you or do videos or to chop them up and have them in my own um, apothecary and to make fresh medicine, um, not dried, but having it as a fresh, you can, I would say if you wanted them fresh, you could freeze some also and then take them out of the freezer and you still got some nice fresh berberine. That's another way of doing it. If you like the fresh tea and the berberine and the plant, I don't think it'll hurt too much by freezing it. But that's it. I'm just showing you the difference in the stalks. There's your older woody stalk. You're not using the root for medicine. You're going to use your your seeds as medicine. And then you have your first, well, they're not biannuals. They are perennials. They'll keep coming back. They will throw their seeds. They'll throw their seeds everywhere. On the side of the road, you'll see a lot of these. Right now, this time of the year, you're going to see a lot of this. So just try not to drive off the road. But when you see them, you go, oh, yes, there's curly dock. There's the curly dock. And they can get up to four or five feet tall. They can get pretty huge. So I'm going to get off now. We're going to go in the kitchen. And uh, we'll see you there soon. Peace. Hey my friends, I'm back doing the very end of the Curly Dock Rumix Crispus video on the roots. And as you can see, I started chopping them up so you didn't have to painfully wait for me to chop them all up. But I am going to show you a few things. So this is the root that we just dug up. It's all washed and cleaned and I cut up a lot of it and I wanted to show you something. So this is one of the roots that is very woody. You wouldn't think it would be, but if you're going to try to chop into that, it's pretty, you can see it's very woody. I mean, you could get some medicine out of it, but I have so much of it, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to bother with it. So this piece here, I'm just going to compost it. See how woody it is inside. So it's getting past its prime time there. So the, I'll show you the roots that I did. The one that was a pale color, which is really nice. If you can chop through them like butter, like this, then this is a really tender, nice root. My son sharpens my knives. <laughs> he thinks mom needs to have really sharp knives. So 
Make sure your knives are sharp. I've cut my fingers plenty of times. Sometimes you can see me on here. I have scars. I have lots of scars from cutting my hands. I, I think that was a burn though. I burnt it on the toaster oven taking things out. So all you're going to do is chop up your roots. The, the finer the better. You don't have to go crazy with it. And I'm going to show you how simple it is to make this beautiful extract. And although, like I said before, I like making combination extracts, but if you're someone that's new and you're just like, hey, I want to experiment, I want to try this out, you don't have to make a quart jar. So here's some bigger roots. Chop them. It's nothing fancy. You've seen, I think you've seen me chop up burdock root before. Um, Chopping them smaller just is a better surface area for the alcohol to get in. But you're going to let it sit. Again, I would let this sit for two months. If you needed to take medicine from it before time, you could take a little bit if you needed it. Because there's definitely berberine. Like I said, you could chew on the root and get berberine out of it. If I was somewhere and I had nowhere to make an extract and I needed medicine right away... I would dig this root up and wash it off in a stream if I had to and just have the medicine and chew on the root for, I don't know, sore throat, toothache, whatever. Um, your intuition would kick in anyways. So here we go. We're just going to fill the jar. It's very simple. You don't have to fill it to the top. I fill it like three quarters of the way. It's going to be a very strong ex uh, tincture extra tincture but we're using alcohol so it is a tincture can you see that here we go we've got them all over the place they're flying everywhere so let's cut a few more so if you wanted to cut more uh you would chop them up and just put them on a cookie cookie tray or in your dehydrator on low setting just to air dry them Sometimes I do that if I want to speed up the drying process and I don't want it sitting around because it's too wet and moist and muggy out. And you create mold. We don't want to do that. Your roots don't have to look pretty. They just have to have medicine in them. I think the rest of those I'll probably cut up and dry them. Have them in a dry extract tincture or tea. You can have it for tea. Um, taste your roots. Don't forget, taste these roots. Take a piece of it, nibble on it, and you'll understand what berberine is after you take a bite of it. I think that's what berberine is. That's how we learned. Our teachers, my teachers taught me that way. They're like, yeah, you got to taste it. What's a nibble? There's rules with bitter herbs. Poisonous herbs will be bitter, but there are rules with dandelion, burdock. There's certain rules with bitterness that comes from certain plants. Berberine, anything with berberine. You just have to know your plants. That's the whole point of studying them and learning them. So I think that's pretty good. It's almost... All the way up there. And again, I'm using 80 proof because I do not have 100 proof. I have 200, 190 proof, but I'm not going to use my 190 proof on doing the uh, curly dock roots. It's just unnecessary. It's a waste of money. So let me grab my lid. Um, you're going to shake it up to get that surface area. You know it's going to settle. Remember that extract is going, or tincture is going to settle. So you're going to come back and add more to it. And let it sit again. Come back to it probably tomorrow and you might have to add more. But there is your extract, or your tincture of your curly dock roots. And remember, um, you're going to let this sit for at least two months. Six weeks to, uh, to eight weeks. I like to leave, I put it in somewhere and I forget about it. Um, remember, you have to label it. Was it on your farm, your home? Was it on a friend's farm? Make sure they don't spray anything. Do not pick these on the side of the roads. Um, 
curly docks everywhere. Right now, you'll see them on the side of the road. You'll be driving down and go, oh, that's curly dock. Look at the seeds on there. Do not pick them. They are, they're, they're absorbing toxins from the ground. The roots absorbing toxins, you know, you have runoff from, you know, old, uh, the, whatever they're using from the salt trucks. You have uh, runoff from exhaust from cars, oil, gas. People spit out their windows. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> it's gross, but I had to say that. So, you know, you want to pick it where you, you, you know, it's fresh. On somebody's farm, they don't spray and use herbicides and pesticides. And this is your medicine for the winter. This quart jar, would you'd never go through this whole quart jar. So if you want to make a smaller pint jar, just pick one little root and make a little pint jar. Just, you know, experiment and practice and you'll get better at it as you do it. Me, I like to add other herbs into my stuff. So if I were to ex if I were to tincture this and then come back and and then strain it and and add it to maybe nettles or um, something else that I have, ginger or whatever else that's stimulating and nice for the liver or in the skin, um, I would do that also. Or you could just take it to, by itself. Um, dosing is another when you're dosing. That's something that you have to learn over time. There's books out there that'll teach you dosing. If I tell you dosing and you do it wrong, that comes back on to me. So I'm not going to tell you how to dose it. That's something you have to learn. You have to find books or take classes, which what I did for years, um, and you're gonna learn how to do all your dosing and your extracts that way. Um, there's plenty of videos of people out there that, that do talk about dosing, but dosing can be a wide variety of how strong did you make this? How weak did you make this? So that is another reason why I say learn your herbs, learn the taste, learn what works for you. And everybody's different. Everybody needs something less or everybody needs something more. Um, depends on their situation and, and what's going on in their body. So this is um, almost 10 minutes long. I'm trying to make them short so I can add them to the other video. Uh, it is going to be a long video, but there's a bunch of information that you're just going to learn from it. So you see how it's already gone down some? So I'm going to leave it on the counter and then come back to it and add a little more alcohol to it later. You don't want herbs sitting, sticking out, and usually the roots don't. You can get one of those glass uh, weights if, you know, if you're concerned about it. But the glass weight also takes away from your extract because it adds stuff to it. <laughs> it, it. If I put a glass weight in here, I lose a bunch of alcohol out. So I, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to use my eye and I'm just going to keep adding to it. If it spills out, well then you know it's good. Date it, mark it, the date, what's in it, what plant, where you got it from, and um, then just put it away. And there you have it. So you can find me on my YouTube channel, which is Vermont Pure Herbs. This video will be uploaded soon because <laughs> it's going to be long. Um, they take a long time to upload. It's going to. I'm on the Grassroot Warriors Network on Rumble. You can find me on there. All my videos, well, not all of them, but most of my videos are on there. The longer ones. Um, you can also go on my website. Um, this is this is in my gallbladder support and my liver support. Uh, I don't have it by itself available yet. Um, it will be on the website soon. And the website is www.vermontpureherbs.com. And I'm on Facebook, I'm on Rumble, I'm on Telegram, and I'm on Instagram. You can also Google me and look up the Google, um, people leave Google comments and uh, how they like the products and things like that about me. So far, it's all been good. <laughs> so I'm going to sign off now and you all enjoy this video and give me a thumbs up if you like it. Let me know what you want to see more of. I try to give you as much information as I possibly can, but you know yourself, you can, you can go beyond that and you can look things up. You can get books, study in your books. You may find some things that I didn't talk about today. Um, I can't say everything because I'm busy either chopping and talking and... <laughs> Sometimes that doesn't always correlate to everything that I want to tell you and I forget. So I hope you enjoy this video and uh, enjoy the rest of this day. Peace.